the spirit, yes. and we gon' make it. Amen. 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 I'm just excited about yes. God. Yes. yes. Woo! Glory to God because I know it's through Him. Yes. God. That I'm able to stand here today. Oh, it's yes. through Him. Can't do nothing on my own. I learned I, I, I just can't do it on my own. I've tried. And it just didn't work out right. It was just a mess, I tell you. But through the grace of God, when we do it with the help of the Lord, things are going to come out just fine. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go into the Word of God. And there are a couple of scriptures that I'll be traveling through on today. Amen. And while I was sitting there, the first one that hit me was Jeremiah 29 and 11. And it's amazing, because I was like, oh, Lord, I'm gonna have to thumb for it. And then when I stood up at the podium, I remembered it's on the front of this book I got up here. So I didn't have to thumb for it, amen. Glory to God. You know, you like to be organized, but how many of you know that God will talk to you in the midst of your plan? Amen. In the midst of what you going to do and tell you what he wants done. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I don't know about y'all, but I just believe in yielding to God and letting him have his way. Glory to God. So we'll go to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yes. I, I just need to read that one more time. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Somebody say prosper. And not to harm you. Somebody say no harm. No harm. Plans to give you Hope, somebody say hope. hope. And a future. Oh, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we're just thankful unto you and we bless your name. Father, we ask that your will will be done and that you receive all glory. Speak to us, Lord, for we are listening, God. Open up our ears, oh God. Open our hearts that we'll be able to receive what you have to say on today. We thank you for it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. In James, the first chapter, starting at the second verse, it says, my brethren, Count it all joy well. when you fall into diverse temptations, well. knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect well. and entire, wanting nothing. Oh, yes, Lord. yes, Lord. If any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. That giveth to all men liberally, 
and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of no degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But the rich in that he is made low because as a flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So shall, so also shall the rich man fade away in his way. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God a praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Amen. Amen. On this morning, I want to minister from the topic that there's purpose in your pain. That there is purpose in your pain. A lot of times, people want to get mad with God when they go through stuff and when there are issues and things that occur in life. They want to get angry and upset. They want to leave the church. They want to stop praying, stop reading the word. But you know, I come to let you know that God did not promise us a rose garden. He did not promise us that we would not go through. But what he did promise is that when we do go through, that he would be there with us. Glory be to God. And we must understand that there's purpose for what we go through. God does not just allow us to go through things just because he likes to see us in pain. Uh, I heard the word being read this morning that there is a season for everything. You know, there's a time that we're going to cry. There's a time that we're going to be happy. You know, there's a time for life, a time for death. There's seasons. Oh, my God. There's seasons in life. Now, I don't know what season that you're in, but whatever season that you're in, realize that you can bloom where you're planted. Realize that the things that you're going through is really just fertilizing your soil. The stuff that you're dealing with is just neutralizing some things in your life that should not be there. Oh, there's purpose. God already has a plan for our lives, for each of our lives. And sometimes he has to allow things to occur and to happen for us to get on the course. Because oh, if it was up to us, we would never get on the course if we knew what was ahead. 
some of us would have never said yes, Lord, to our callings if we would have known what was ahead. Some of us would never said yes, Lord, to a marriage relationship had we known what was ahead. Glory be to God. But this is why God does not always show us everything because if he let us see the whole picture, we want to skip all of that and get to the end. Can we just go to the end, God? Can we skip all of this in-between stuff? But if you just go to the end, you're not going to be ready. not going to be ready for the end. James said, brethren, hey guys, count it all joy when you fall into divers, to the many kinds, the different kinds of temptations, you know? When you dealing with all this stuff, count it as joy. Oh my God. I often say that if we were on the devil's plan, we wouldn't have all this stuff. So therefore, we ought to be rejoicing when we start going through some stuff because we must realize we must be on the right track. We must be on the right plan. And the enemy is just coming, trying to buffet you, trying to throw you off the track. There's some things that we find out as we go through. He said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You know, there was a saying that said, don't pray for patience. Because when you pray for patience, you get all this other stuff too. Because the trying of your faith is what worketh patience. Uh, when you go through some stuff, when you're dealing with issues, when you're having problems, when people are scandalizing your name, when you want that extra piece of chocolate. <laughs> oh God, it's the trying of your faith uh, that worketh your patience. But patience has her perfect work. But let patience have her perfect work. In other words, we have to learn how to wait on him. Oh, God. Sometimes we don't want to wait. We want it right then. And we want it right now. Oh, God. We don't, we don't want to wait on stuff. And now we living in this microwave generation, oh, the cell phone generation, oh, all the electronic social media generation, where you don't have to put a stamp on the mail and let it go through the mail. You can have what you want right then and there. All you got to do is click some buttons. And we expect God to operate in the clicking of the buttons. Tell your neighbor, not so. Not so. We got to go through some stuff. I understand salvation is free. How many of you know salvation is free? Amen. But if you want some anointing on your life, mm. Jesus. <laughs> if you want some power, Jesus. if you want to see some signs and wonders, oh, you got to go through some stuff. Oh, glory to God. You got to learn how to be resilient. Well, well. Oh, God. What do you mean, Pastor? When you kept coming through this door, even though you were stopped early this morning, that shows the resilience. Amen. When you got up and your body said, no! <laughs> Ooh, 
but you kept pressing anyways. It may have took you a little longer, but you made it on through. See, that's resilience. Amen. Glory be to God. When it's time to get in the face of God, and your children are sick, and, and, and things are going on in your relationship, and, and all this is coming at you at one time, but you say, stop the presses. I got to get in God's face. So all that other stuff got to go on the back burner because I need to get to God. Isn't it amazing how the enemy comes at us with so many different things in order to stop the flow? Oh, glory to God. And he's come to the place where he knows our patterns. And he knows what's going to bring us to a screeching halt. So he often tries those things. Oh, God. He knows if he just pressed the button on our children. Oh, God. But what he doesn't realize is those that have been saved and know a little bit about Jesus, know a little bit about the Lord. When he pressed those buttons, their knees go to bend. Woo! And they go to crying out to God. And so it has the reverse effect on what he really wanted to happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, he said, if you lack wisdom, ask. Yes. Ask of God. Yes. Oh, because he'll give liberally to all men. All you got to do is ask. God, I don't understand your word. Ask. Lord, help me. Give me clarity. Give me clearness of what your word says. Speak to my spirit. Oh, God. Hallelujah. There's purpose, 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 purpose. Pain expands your endurance. It stretches you. Oh, God. And it helps to make you resilient. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen a rubber band when you start pulling it back? Amen. Glory to God. And if you let that rubber band go, it's going to fly. Glory to God. So while we're going through the pain, and while we're going through all this that we're going through, it's stretching us so that when we're released, we're a lot farther than we were when we went through. And say I would not be where I am or who I am if I did not have some pain in my life, if I did not have to cry sometime. Glory be to God if I did not have to go through. But I always have to remember that there is purpose and God has got a greater plan in store. And what we're going through right now is nothing in comparison to what God has in store for us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul, he begins to talk about some things because he was going through, he went through some stuff. In order to get where he was, to be able to write all these letters, to be able to minister to all the churches that he was ministering to, uh, he was a trailblazer. He was one that, that broke the ice and created 
another direction for what people were not accustomed to. Don't you know when people are not accustomed to stuff, they go to telling lies on you? When people are not accustomed to the way that you do things or the way that you say things, they back up off of you sometimes. Glory be to God because they don't understand. They didn't understand Paul. Because Paul went from killing the Christians to being a Christian. Some of them thought it was a setup. Oh, God. They didn't trust them. But they were like, uh uh, you were just killing us. <laughs> now? You trying to be a part? They'll feed you with a long-handled spoon because I'm not quite sure what you're about. But we find out here in the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, the 7th verse says, Unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. He was getting such great revelations, and you know how we are. Sometimes we can get the big head when God starts talking to us. <laughs> You know, we can get the I know it all spirit. Oh, glory to God. So God allowed him uh, to be buffeted by the enemy so that he would not be exalted above measure. Now, some folks talk about what this buffet was. And I'm not going there, this thorn in the flesh. Some say it was because he was blind, and some say it was different things. But whatever it was, we know that it was aggravation. Somebody say aggravation. Aggravation to Paul, because it was a thorn in his flesh. In other words, it was something that was poking at him, something that was stabbing him from time to time, something that was irritating him. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about, that you have someone or something that is constantly nagging at you. Glory be to God. While you're trying to move in the things of God, it seems like you just Sometimes we do like Paul. Paul says, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. God, will you please move this person out of my life? Every time I try to do good, here they come, pulling me back down. You know, and we pray, Lord. We we'll do something with this person on his job. Oh my. You know, and we'll be praying. Lord, deliver me. I need to be delivered. Help me, God. Do something with him. Kill him. Take him. Y'all know we've done it. Glory be to God. Woo. Uh, glory, glory, glory. Make them sick or something. <laughs> Woo, yes, God. For this thing, I besought the Lord three times. I, I went to God three times that it might leave me. I went to God. I went to God. And God answered me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Ah, uh, yes. When we have things that are bothering us, things that we can't deal with, 
things that cause us. It may be a sickness. Oh my God. Yeah. Whatever it may be. We have to remember that God's grace mm. is sufficient yeah. for us. Well. His grace yeah. and through his strength. Well. We ain't got no strength, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, through his strength. Right. And see, this is what we have to remember. Sometimes God allows stuff to come upon us for us to remember yeah. that we are not the be-all. Yeah. Well, well. But we need him. Yeah. Most likely, therefore, will I rather glory. Wow. Paul said, hold on. Uh, God, you're going to be with me. You're going to make me strong through your strength. Oh, my. I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ rests upon me. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I'd rather have the power of God resting upon me. It's okay to go through some stuff. God, you going to rest. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, oh God, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, uh -huh, then am I strong. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have commend, been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind mm -hmm. the very chiefest apostle, mm -hmm. though I be nothing. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Paul realized that I can't have a big head because it ain't nothing that I'm doing. That's right. <laughs> but it's all in Christ. Right. But look at what it took, what Paul went through. The Bible lets us know that Paul shipwrecked three times. And one of them times he spent a whole day out there. Glory to God. He was stoned and beaten five times. He was snake bitten. He was chased. He was scandalized. He was slandered. He was the focus of riots. Well, that sounds a little bit like our forefathers in this Black History Month. Uh, he was the focus of riots. You know, like when that woman got delivered, the one that was able to tell the future and uh huh. It was following behind him. Talking about these are the great men of God, and he got tired of it. And he just turned around and he commanded that spirit to come out of her, and she was delivered. Now these folks, money maker, they're money maker, and no longer able to make money. Don't you know he caused a riot? That's just one time. Mm. But there were times that Paul caused riots. Mm. He didn't mean to, mm. as we say, mm. but he just stood for the truth. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Not only that, but he received death threats. Mm. Oh, there were places that Paul, if he went back in, they promised to kill him. Mm. Death threats. But you know what? This is the same Paul that said, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Through all that Paul went through, Paul was able 
to deliver a word that will deliver people. He was able to deliver a word that broke bondage. He was able to deliver a word that caused chains to break. He was able to deliver a word that caused people to be healed and delivered. He was able to bring forth a word. See, he had to go through some things. Oh my God. He was able to establish churches. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, it's not easy. Some folks today think it's easy to have church. Let's get you a building and put your sound system in there and go to preaching it. No, that oh, is. <laughs> it is not just that simple. Glory to God. But there's some work that's got to be done. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. When you go through what you go through, there's purpose in it. I'm reminded about Joseph. Do you remember Joseph in Genesis, the 37th chapter? The one that God gave the great vision of who he was going to be and who was going to bow down to him and all these great things that God showed him. This is why you have to be careful of where you show your vision. you got to know that you know that God said release it. And even when God tells you to release it, you're still going to have some folks that retaliate. You're going to have some people that are not going to want to see your vision come through. You're going to have some people that don't believe what you're saying. You're going to have some people that's going to try you. Oh, my God. Woo! Joseph, his family, what is it with family sometimes? His family are the ones that didn't receive it. Didn't receive it. So they find it. How are we going to get rid of Joseph? Let's just kill him. Let's, let's just plot to kill him. Thank God for Reuben. Don't you tell me that God will not put a ram in the bush. He's always got somebody in place for whatever you may go through in your life. God has got somebody in place to be able to help you to get through whatever you're getting through. Whether it's a smile, whether it's a word, whether it's a lunch, whatever it may be, God will send somebody right in the nick of time. Thank God Reuben stepped in and said, let's not kill him. Why don't we just throw him over there in the pit? Oh, my goodness. God took Joseph from the pit. Oh, my goodness. And did you notice that everywhere Joseph went, God gave him favor? Oh, my goodness. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. 